Hey guys, I bought two more AMD Radeon Low Profile Graphics Cards. These turned out to be outstanding for Windows XP Retro Gaming. Because they're low profile, you can buy one of these used small form factor OEM machines from HP or Dell, install these video cards and you will get an amazing gaming experience. We have the R7 250 with 2GB of video RAM. And this is the R5-340X, also with 2GB of VRAM. These two cards, they have a lot in common. Both have 384 cores, 28nm process, graphics core next, first generation, 2GB of DDR3 memory. Both have DisplayPort and DVI. You get 4K60 out of the DisplayPort and 1920x1200 at 60Hz from the DVI output. Both have the memory running at 1000MHz. On the R7, the core clock is a little bit higher, 1000 megahertz, boosting to 1050, whereas on the R5, the core runs at 900 megahertz. This is currently my Windows XP test platform, X79, with a processor from the Ivy Bridge generation. The processor is the Xeon 1620v2, running at 3.7 gigahertz. I've configured it without hyperthreading and with only two cores. We have 32 gigabytes of DDR3, 1866 megahertz quad channel memory. Windows XP can only use around four gigabytes. It just ignores the excess RAM. For sound, we're using the Sound Blaster X5 Titanium PCI Express. For storage, we have a Western Digital Green SATA SSD with 240 gigabytes. And we're using a 750 watt power supply from Thermaltake. I'm installing Windows XP Pro Service Pack 3, the 32-bit version from a USB drive. We're using the Win setup from USB Project. I've covered that in a recent video. Check the card at the top if you want to check out that tutorial. After installing Windows XP, I'm using the Snappy Driver Installer Origin. This will probe the system for all the devices and then you can install all the drivers in one hit. I do untick the drivers for graphics and sound because I will install them separately. The graphics drivers are next. We need the AMD Catalyst 14.4 Pack 2 drivers. And when you install them, you will actually get a error. The actual display drivers will not install. So you need to reboot the machine and then go into the device manager and manually install the drivers. You will find the drivers unpacked on the C drive. And for the Sound Blaster, we're using the Daniel K X5 Support Pack 8.0 Refresh 3 drivers. And here we have the first result, 3D Mark. The red bar, that's the Radeon R5 340X with the 64-bit interface. The blue bar is the R7 250, which has the wider 128-bit memory interface. And you can see, yeah, it's much faster, but even the R5 340X still does really well. I'm not benchmarking 3 dmark 2001 SE anymore. I found too much variety. If you run it three times, you get three quite different results, whereas the 05 and the 03 benchmark results are a lot more consistent. Here we have Far Cry. I used the ultra quality preset, no anti-aliasing, but 16x and isotropic filtering. We can also see resolution scaling from 800 by 600 all the way to 1600 by 1200. And both cards will give you at least 90 FPS, even at 1600 by 1200, which is absolutely amazing. Half-Life 2 Lost Coast is next. Max details in the options. No anti-aliasing, but I've turned on 60x and isotropic filtering. And this game also flies on these Radeon cards at 1600 by 1200. Even the R5 340X gets 123 FPS. Doom 3 is an OpenGL game, which is not the strength of Radeon cards, but uh, the cards do quite well here. Even at 1600 by 1200, you will get at least 60 FPS in all these cards with the R7 250. Uh, scoring 133, which is amazing. This is fear. I chose the maximum details, no anti-aliasing and no soft shadows. And on the R5 at 1600 by 1200, the first time it struggles a little bit, we're getting 53 FPS. So for this game and for high resolutions, you will be better off using the R7. And finally, our most demanding test. This is fear with the soft shadows enabled, which 
can cut the FPS almost in half. So at 1600 by 1200, the R5 is just not cutting it anymore. And even the R7 struggles a little bit to reach 60 FPS, but 58 is still pretty good. So uh, in this game, I would recommend going with the R7 and playing at 1280 by 1024 for a silky smooth experience. So the R7 250 is clearly the faster card. The 128-bit interface gives it much better performance, especially at high resolutions. The R5 340X is still a decent video card. The narrow 64-bit memory interface does mean that at higher resolutions and in demanding titles, it starts to struggle a little bit. But you can improve the situation by overclocking the RAM. Now, this is a retro themed video, but we quickly switch to Windows 10. So we've got the Radeon R5 340X running Dirt 3 at 1080p with medium details and we get around 40 to 50 FPS. And for the overclocking, you can go into the Radeon driver, but the options are locked. So I had to use the MSI Afterburner. And here, I'm um, overclocking the RAM from 1000 to 1300. So that's a 30% overclock on the RAM and Dirt 3 runs now at almost 60 FPS. So basically, if you wanna overclock this card, go for the RAM. This is the weakness, this is the Achilles heel. Uh, overclock the RAM and you will get a really nice performance boost. I have plans to do a Windows 10 video testing the R7 250 with modern games, but I found the R5 340X, the performance just too low. So this one I recommend only for Windows XP retro gaming. So guys, there you go. We had a look at the Radeon R7 250 as well as the Radeon R5 340X. Both have two gigabytes of VRAM, modern display outputs, really fast performance under Windows XP at high resolutions and in more demanding games. And we saw that the R7 performs better because it has the 128-bit memory interface. In terms of pricing, these have to be cheap. Uh, don't spend a fortune on them. 10, 15, 20 dollars, something in that region is acceptable and they should be easily available on places such as eBay. And in terms of the system, Everything worked fine. I'm really happy with the X79 platform. These motherboards, you can buy them from places such as AliExpress. But of course, because these are low profile, you can buy a small, small form factor machine, a Dell Optiplex or a HP uh, Elite or Desk Pro or something like that and build a really awesome Windows XP machine. I just have a lot of parts from the X79 generation, CPUs, RAM, they also have NVMe, uh, which is bootable for Windows XP. That's nice, as well as power and reset buttons on the motherboard. So for my channel, they're beautiful. A little bit too much RAM. Uh, 32 gig is, is, I'm actually not quite sure why I went with so much RAM. I'll have a look if I find some four gig sticks and uh, take it down to 16. And with the storage, definitely SSD. Nice, quiet, really fast performance. I do recommend that you partition them under Windows 10 to make sure the partitions are aligned. That will reduce the wearing out of the NAND cells, especially, well, not especially uh, when you do write operations. So yeah, all in all, beautiful cards, uh, very smooth project, didn't run into any issues. And as always, please share your thoughts about these Radeon cards. I've got a few more cards on my shopping list, uh, something like an RX 5. 50, I believe there's a Dell OEM card with four gigs of VRAM that might be of interest. And um, yeah, do give me more recommendations. Uh, always eager to hear your input. And yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.